Good morning, I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take for Market Rebellion. And by the way, I'm down here in sunny, beautiful Florida. We're in St. Petersburg right now. We had plans to be over at Tampa Stadium for this, as well as the halftime report, maybe even the five o'clock show today, which I'm on both those shows. Unfortunately, those fell through for uh, reasons that we don't need to really discuss, but uh, unfortunate, because that really would have been fun. And I think it would have been fun for everybody to have the opportunity to look out over that beautiful stadium as, as we're talking about the financial world. Speaking of which, we had yesterday, which was another extension of new highs and a nice explosive move to the upside. We did ease back late in the day. When you look at the Dow, we were flying to the upside, up triple digits once again. We did finish up triple digits as well. We were up about 105 points, but we were higher than that. We had a little bit of an easing back at the end of the day. What we did see also though, was the participation this time of the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, which had been in the red, had a nice accelerated move to the upside, finished up on the day, again, new highs and up about 60 points. So we're holding well above now that 30,000 level for the Dow. So that's that's pretty impressive. We've got the highs in the NASDAQ. That's been obviously extremely impressive as well. And then of course the S&P, and we've talked about that around that 3,700 number. So a, very, a really, really strong market. What was really fueling a lot of this move? Well, again, it was energy and we had a nice powerful move. When you look at those integrated names, which I discussed yesterday, those names were really starting to move to the upside in a nice way. We're seeing Chevron, we're seeing Exxon, we're seeing a little bit out of BP, a little bit less than some of those bigger names, but you also have these incredible moves. And I, I wanna keep emphasizing this because I don't think we're hearing this anywhere else, but the beta names and energy. So it's not just the fact that crude is now in the 46 level. It's not just Chevron moving to the upside, but it's Pioneer, it's Continental, it's Marathon, it's Occidental, all of those names having a really powerful, strong move to the upside and the participation we've seen there and all of the unusual option activity that we have seen in energy. And oh, by the way, basic materials, let's go to jump to that as well, because we've talked about all of the paper we've seen there as well in terms of options. And I say paper, these days it's not paper, it hasn't been paper in years, but still, that's the old, the old vernacular. But anyway, so we've continued to see option activity in the material space as well. We've seen it in Vale, new highs. We've seen it in US Steel, new highs. We've seen it in Nucor, a nice move, powerful move to the upside. So we really are seeing, we've seen energy, we've seen materials. We even had some nice participation yesterday from industrials with Dow and 3M and a, and a, and a couple of those names. So that's been strong. Where we also have seen some nice participation to the upside doesn't get discussed nearly enough. And I've brought up biotech a lot, but I'll also bring up right now healthcare in general. So you've got Moderna and you've got Amgen, but you also have Merck, you have J&J. &J. We have some nice moves out of, out of some of these other areas as well. So the broad move of the markets, I think, is something that really is important to point out because this isn't just four names or five names as so many people had discussed for so long. This has been a nice broad rally. As a matter of fact, take a look if, if you want and take a look at where biotech was, look at the highs that they've reached up to. We talk about the semiconductors all the time. We're also talking about the volatility index. Now we were in a little bit more of a range. It's tight, so let's not over exaggerate anything. But the range was from 20 to 22 yesterday in terms of the VIX. And that's about, we, we split the middle of that in terms of where we wanted to close out yesterday, but the volumes did pull back. They eased back again, still 30 plus million. We were 31.7 million contracts yesterday. The leadership role, once again, this time, Tesla, the number one, but it was followed right, right behind it was Apple, then Pfizer. Uh, Palantir actually was uh, number three, then Pfizer, but really nice. Those four, really a, a pretty impressive day, probably a, a pretty decent percentage actually of the full number in those four, four stocks or so. So that's been something that uh, did stand out. People were looking at stimulus, people were looking at Pfizer and the rollouts of vaccines. And I think there was a lot of positive um, participation because of that. And that was really what was fueling a lot of what we were seeing. But it wasn't just that, because as I say, one of the biggest leaders we had was energy and another wonderful day. So today, pre-market, we're up about 100 points, call it 95 points. We open up the day up about 100 and a quarter. We, we weren't seeing any participation from the NASDAQ. That was in the red and continued to stay in the red, continues to stay in the red. And then we've got this first 45 minutes. We started to ease back pretty significantly. So now up about 30 points, at least a few minutes ago, up about 30 points there. Volatility still hanging right around that 20 level. So call it between 20 and 21. Uh, Crude, again, 46. Energy, again, very, very strong for us. But the participation in terms of the Dow that was driving the Dow higher, at least early, 
we had a couple of different names and, and the S&P as well. So you look at Home Depot, you look at Lowe's, you look at Disney, you throw in Tesla, we'll talk about the S&P and the NASDAQ there, Salesforce, and you get the idea. You also look over at some of these uh, airlines where we've seen a lot of option paper of late as well, but we are also seeing a nice powerful move out of American, out of United. And a lot of that obviously tied into this vaccine news and people, the, the excitement of Pfizer and what, what's going on in Europe right now. So that's certainly something that uh, that everybody was focusing on to, to some degree because pretty powerful move. And, and now we're easing back, as I mentioned, from those early highs. Now we could bounce around pretty decent. And you just wonder, we have been going up, 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 up. You wonder when a little bit of this air is gonna come out. So that's why we always preach and talk about discipline and, and, and you've got a plan and the plan is, what are your triggers after owning something? And that's what we talk about all the time here at Market Rebellion. So that's, that's something that we find to be very important. Obviously, knowledge is king. But then on top of that knowledge, you've got to have discipline. And we do discuss that day in and day out. We did have some weakness early today in some of the semis. We had some strength out of biotech. Skyworks, Cuervo, NXPI, those names down. You look at Zoom, add that to a, a little bit of the pressure on the markets. Energy, once again, looks pretty impressive. Occidental, we had a Valero, we had Diamondback, we had Marathon, we had Holly, all those names definitely adding to what we were seeing at least early on out of, out of uh, some of the different indices, especially you look over at the OIH and we talked about yesterday that XOP paper. I'm gonna jump to unusual right now and the unusual option activity. And by the way, if you have any questions, you can, you can add that in right now as far as the, uh, the q and if, if there's anything out there that you want to uh, ask any questions on this live broadcast. But Apple stood out for me. And obviously there's some, some chatter today with Apple and, and there, yesterday there was some chatter with the new headphones and all the rest of that. So it's, it's pretty interesting. We have some unusual there, but it's not what we've been seeing. It's not one week out. It's not expiring on Friday and it's not even expiring in December. We're actually going out to January. The January 22nd, expiring calls and they're buying the 135s. They're going for about two and a quarter. So these are decently out of the money. It's about $10 out of the money. Stock was trading 124.60 at the time. They bought about 2000 of these calls. So it's not a massive trade, but it's still a nice beefy trade. 2000 of these paying a little over $2 for these options. And the fact that uh, looking at Apple, a name that has participated recently, it started making this comeback again and it sold off a few months ago down towards that 105 level. Here we are now in the 124. So a pretty nice recovery there and, and, and something that I think it really did stand out in terms of there's a lot of standouts today. We've, we've had a lot of unusual option that I've been participating. By the way, I did buy these calls. So full disclosure, I went in just after I saw these, these hitting and decided I wanted to add. I already have stock, of course, but I, I wanted to add these calls to the position as well. I've actually already traded so far about five different uh, unusual option activities that have hit because I found them to be interesting enough and, and I liked the risk reward that I was seeing out of the, some of those. So real quick, we'll get to a couple of questions. Are you still in the XLF 30 calls? Great question, the answer is no. And, and I'll give you a real quick synopsis. I've talked about this one the other day when somebody was asking about the same exact trade and that's fine that you're asking. So I like the XLF, I like individual names better. I, I will talk like I did yesterday, the XOP. Um, we could have used that today because we had some unusual there again, but, uh, yeah, I, I just don't like trading the ETFs as much because you don't get as much bang for your buck oftentimes. And so I would rather go aggressively towards specific names than actually going for these ETFs. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't trade them because I do. So I bought those XLF calls a while back when we were talking about them. I think I use those for unusual option activity on the halftime report. But in any case, they moved, they moved pretty brisk uh, to the upside and I decided to take that off. I still have positions in all kinds of different financial names, but I wanted to just trade that one. It was a good trade, it, was, it worked out great. I was excited about it. I know it's probably still working as it's moving to the upside. So thoughts on Val Valley National Bank Corp breaking 10. Thanks Pete, appreciate you. I, I appreciate you, Chris, thank you. I like this name. This is one of those names that when it hit, I had not seen it before, so I decided, you know what? I looked into it a lot more with depth, and when we had the unusual options in there, I converted over and decided to buy the stock. I like the name, I think the regionals, I didn't have much exposure at the time when, I, when we had unusual options in there. So I decided I wanted a little bit more exposure. So rather than doing the calls, I actually bought the stock and I'm selling calls against Valley each and every week. So that one's pretty, Rocket, yes. Um, I do have a position in those calls as well. It's been a busy week, man. I mean, when I look at what we traded yesterday, what I traded on Monday, it's great. The unusual options that we've been seeing have been 
extraordinarily active, not just in the total volume, but in the number of different stocks that we are seeing and a lot of names that we see recurring, buying, 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 and they're rolling and all the rest of that. Those are the kinds of trades we really, really love here at Market Rebellion because that's a commitment. That's a commitment from somebody who's decided, hey, I've made money here. I still want to be here. I'll take this off, take some of that risk off, and I'll roll up and out and buy a little bit more time and a little further up strike. I love seeing those kinds of trades. That's the commitment we love to see. So what else? And I'll, I know I, I, I always say it, but let's see. Hey, Pete, what are your thoughts on the heavy open interest in these spider puts? Um, it makes sense. When you look at the volatility index, and I'll be talking about this, I'm sure today on the halftime report, but the volatility index now trading towards 20, which is half of where it was at the beginning of November, uh, it makes sense to start buying protection if your portfolio, now this is the, the part that people have to understand. What does your portfolio really look like? Is it more like an S&P? Is it more like a NASDAQ? Is it more like a Dow? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. But if we are gonna see any kind of pullbacks and we, we all sort of feel that at some point it makes some sense, not just a pause, but maybe a decent pullback, uh, it would be great to have, I think, in a smart move to be able to put on some sort of a trade there with the spider puts. I, I personally like the idea of putting on spreads, a nice wide spread, but a spread where I'm, I'm buying the one strike and I'm selling the, the strike even further down and just trying to turn that into a spread so it's not just all on the one side of the trade. And it gives me a little bit more comfort to the downside. And yes, it's it, it's still a hedge and it's a little bit less of a hedge, but that that's something I'm okay with. ATVI, yeah, that's been a pretty uh, interesting one. And I am still in those calls for whoever just asked, are you still in Riot? Yes, I am still in Riot. Um, I'll just do one or two more. AAL, we saw some paper in there today. Thoughts on Palantir? Yep, we, we, that, that's been very, very active. It's amazing. And I pointed this out the other day. I, I am absolutely amazed by the amount of option paper already trading in this name due to the fact of how early into the, the, the trading world this stock is. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anything trade with this kind of volume, but it does show you the kind of marks we're in. A lot of people talk about the Robin Hood trade and all the rest of this. Um, I think Robin Hood trade, our traders are doing some options. I think there's, a, there's probably a lot more on the stock side just from uh, what the education levels are there. And, and I have to express this uh, to everybody. You have to be educated in options to have continued success and, and the opportunities in front of you because you'll understand risk reward better. You'll understand the mechanics of, of the options and what makes them priced the way they are. And, and that's something that is so important. And I always talk about this and I'll talk about it again. Our Market Rebellion team is absolutely unbelievable. These guys are great edge and gals are great educators. They do a fantastic job and you might get lucky a couple of times, but the reality is when you're educated and you have a, 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 the understanding of all this, you will have a much better understanding. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have success. It just means that you'll understand why uh, something worked or didn't work in a, in a much different way. Last question, uh, and I got a bunch of them today. God, you guys are great, man, it's, it's phenomenal. I see a lot about Zynga. I don't really have a major opinion about Zynga other than the fact that we did have that unusual option activity. I liked it when we'd seen it. And um, this is one of those names in the past. You know, there are certain names that when they hit, they have been fairly consistent for us. Snap, you've heard me talk about that, I don't know how many times, but there are a number of names, a, a long list of, of various names that when they hit, I oftentimes wanna be a part of it because it seems like it might even be the same traders from the past and when they've been right and they've been right and they've been right, why not follow that? We talk about following the smart money. That's exactly what we try to do. Folks, have a great day of trading. I will see you at noon today um, here in sunny Florida, St. Pete, actually. And it's great. We've got an absolutely gorgeous day. I might be inside. I might be outside. I'm not really sure. Have a great day of trading, and we'll see you tomorrow.